Hi, everyone. Hope you're all well. Uh, welcome to another edition of Network Tech Talk. I'm your host, uh, Derek Johnston. In today's discussion, we'll be covering private networks and specifically diving into questions uh, that business leaders may have in considering uh, 5G as a network technology. Joining me today to share his insights uh, into the benefits, considerations, and deployment options is my colleague, David Kim, who leads our uh, Network Enterprise Sales Channel initiatives. Hi, David. Uh, how are you doing today? Pretty good. Feeling good. One. Glad to hear it. You made it through the uh, the great freeze of uh, 21, <laughs> where you were. That's right. One. Well, thanks again for uh, for joining us and sharing your perspective and experience to date on this, uh, which really, really is a rapidly expanding um, market in the kind of cellular network technology uh, space. It's uh, exciting times for for enterprises of the latest 5G network technology and how it's going to fuel. You know, I think a lot a lot of folks in the industry are looking at it as providing the uh, the platform, if you will, for the next industrial. Uh, revolution, if you will. Um, so before diving into the topic at hand, I just wanted to provide a little, some guidance on housekeeping. Um, we are taking questions uh, at the end of the session today. So uh, just to ensure good video and audio quality, we're going to be asking folks to submit their questions through the um, Q&A tab, which um, I believe is a little pop-up that's down at the bottom of your interface. Um, there's also a resource tab uh, that is in, in the interface where you can find what is hopefully um, helpful materials like web links, product and solution briefs, or other content um, on the topic at hand today. So um, with that, David, let me turn it over to you, and then um, at the end, we'll, we'll get into some, some uh -huh. Q&A. Perfect. I uh, appreciate it, Derek. Uh, so let me start today by taking a step back to reminisce on the good old days of 3G. So 3G launched around 2002, uh, 4G in 2010, and 5G in 2019. So roughly every 10 years, upgrades in cellular technology have essentially changed our lives. If I'd known just how much 4G was going to change everything, there are definitely a good number of companies I would have bought more shares in for sure. But besides the more interesting topic of how to play 5G stocks, let's cover today's question of how 5G will affect the enterprise, why 5G or why enterprise should invest in 5G private networks, and more specifically, what path do they take to get to 5G? Let's start with uh, how 5G is going to impact the enterprise. So besides bringing us cool things like cloud gaming and multi-stream video of our favorite sporting events, 5G is expected to create value in the form of everything from smart grids where milliseconds matter, industry 4.0 applications for manufacturing that can deliver huge annual cost savings, and a full transformation in the way we experience healthcare, transform, uh, transportation, and retail. Uh, 5G is part of a movement in which several technologies really start to come together. Uh, things like MEC, AI, IoT, AR, VR, and etc. Technology research firm Omdia recently reported that uh, private LTE and 5G will likely generate $5 billion of global enterprise expenditure between 2020 and 2025. So what exactly are enterprise buying into? Let's talk briefly about why an enterprise would consider a private network. By deploying a private network, an enterprise can support various applications, including those which require ultra low latency and enhanced reliability. When one minute of downtime is measured in millions of dollars, Reliability requirements are no joke. Enterprises requiring mission-critical applications and needing to move high volumes of data will value um, a private network for um, 4G or 5G. They're attractive because it allows not only for better, but also centralized control over provisioning and quality of service at the device level. Security is another key benefit of private networks, and while 
Wi-Fi 6E introduces several performance and security enhancements. There are still some limitations when compared to cellular networks in terms of protecting identity and data. When companies are deeply invested in Wi-Fi, you know, why would they choose a private cellular network, especially given some of the recent enhancements um, uh, from uh, Wi-Fi 6E? At Samsung, we believe that these solutions are complementary. So while there are some advantages of 5G over Wi-Fi, ultimately it's going to depend on your network and application needs. For instance, if you need seamless handovers between indoor and outdoor networks, or see a need for ultra low latency or enabling some sort of industry 4.0 applications, 5G is probably the best suited choice that offers a more future-proofed solution worth investing in. As you can see from the chart here, private networks outperform Wi-Fi in many areas from security to reliability, device density, mobility, and OPEX. That being said, private 4G and 5G can operate in the same environment without interference and can serve different purposes in the same space. In other words, you don't have to choose between one or the other. Additionally, if you use indoor 5G to provide backhaul for, you know, for 5G CPEs, uh, then you, know, you, you can essentially have the best of both worlds. Um, this, this allows enterprise to continue utilizing Wi-Fi where they still feel they need it. So let me conclude this slide with a question before moving on. How many of you have children who don't use Wi-Fi at home but prefer to use their unlimited data plan because it's more convenient and reliable? Well, they do say that children are our future. Uh, going on, let's talk about two potential deployment paths for enterprises as they consider their private network options. The first option, as you can see on the slide, is a fully independent network built by the enterprise without the support of an operator. While this option can be higher in cost if you're building a network from scratch, it does offer a lot of benefits in terms of configurability and specific use cases. As depicted on the slide, an office can benefit from enhanced mobile broadband, whereas a factory may be better served with ultra reliable low latency communications. This could mean the difference of having to place, let's say a large you know, server next to a production line, as opposed to in a centralized server location at the far end of the factory to optimize production floor space. The second deployment option is to go through a mobile network operator. Depending on the use case and enterprise environments, Samsung and our m and partners can provide solutions that support configurations such as public or private, licensed or unlicensed bands, on-premise, edge or cloud cores, or just a dedicated slice of the network that ensures a certain level of quality of service all with equipment that has been vetted and approved for their own network, ensuring the highest level of uh, sourcing scrutiny. So going back to the use case where an enterprise might be able to utilize private 5G, perhaps we can take a look at a specific vertical such as uh, manufacturing. As far as manufacturing is concerned, Samsung is no stranger to this side of the business. A phone could potentially be manufactured and end up on a store shelf the same day on the other side of the world. We've conducted several demos and trials in the US and Asia to test the benefits of 5G as it relates to manufacturing, including to optimize our own process. Specifically, we've tested 5G-driven computer vision use cases. Imagine high-speed cameras recording thousands of high resolution photos of parts as they fly by. The photos are taken in several different formats to detect the slightest of imperfections in the production. So without digressing too much, I will add that Samsung has signed some major global partnerships that bring to market some incredible 
private 5G driven industry 4.0 offerings. Perhaps, um, Derek, this can be another topic for another webinar in the future, but back to the topic at hand, Samsung has invested heavily to create a portfolio of competitive, competitive products that can serve a wide range of applications, such as uh, autonomous guided vehicles, advanced communications, things like video surveillance, all while offering super reliability. So now let's uh, take a look at Samsung's 5G solutions and how they can cater to the enterprise. So RAN is the most crucial part of the 5G network, and that's why we offer a full range of 5G RAN products. Our goal is to enable true 5G service by leveraging super fast speeds, instantaneous communication, and massive connectivity with billions of things. Samsung's radio solutions range from low band to millimeter wave, and our baseband can connect to a large number of radios, including massive MIMO and millimeter wave solutions to expand cell capacity. It can expand capacity within the existing hardware platform footprint without the need for an additional um, you know, real, real estate space. Samsung front hall switch is an innovative future-proof solution in the RAN portfolio as well. A key feature of the front hall switch is the eSIPRI to SIPRI conversion. It supports legacy radios, so operators can easily connect them with a new baseband based on eSIPRI to support higher uh, user bandwidth. And as a way to continue the 5G evolution, we also recently announced our brand new Samsung Link portfolio. When you look at the traffic overall from 1G to 2G to 3G, more and more traffic gets moved indoors, and that's going to be further accelerated by 5G. It's projected that 80% of total 5G data traffic will be generated indoors. Over time, folks have uh, started to realize the importance of wireless uh, infrastructure as a fourth utility. And as more applications are, have been created to take advantage of all of this, um, you know, they utilize that increased throughput. When you look at scenarios where critical IoT, massive IoT, and enhanced mobile broadband are essential, essentially there is no other choice but to, um, you know, opt for a 5G indoor network. Here's our Samsung Link portfolio, uh, which includes three unique solutions to meet various needs. The Link Cell, uh, Link Hub Pro, and the Link Hub. Link Cell is among the first commercial products available globally that provides wireless operators with a millimeter wave indoor small cell. It can be uh, discre discreetly placed on walls or ceilings, similar to a Wi-Fi access point, while minimizing noise through a fanless convection cooling. We also offer a 5G active DAS solution called the Link Hub Pro. This system is useful in large buildings where an extensive IT infrastructure is in place. And the solution includes two main components, a radio hub and an indoor radio. It supports a more diverse spectrum include including uh, low band and mid band. And with a simple architecture, a single radio hub will allow a, mul a mobile operator to connect multiple radios and have those radios work as a single cell to build a wide 5G indoor network without in interference. The Samsung Link Hub acts as a radio to connect passive antennas supporting both LTE and 5G. If a building already has an existing um, passive DAS system, ser uh, service providers can easily upgrade their indoor network to provide 5G service while possibly reusing legacy cabling to save both time and cost. Uh, another essential component of the private network that we cannot forget are, is our compact core, which can support LTE, 5G, NSA, and 5G SA RAN architectures uh, in a single uh, server solution that's essentially 
a tier one operator grade packet core with subscriber and SIM management and policy control functions. Our compact core supports um, specialized features for the enterprise, including multi-tenant and remote management. Under multi-tenancy, the system can allocate individual management options such as um, network function provisioning and state information and charging rules per tenant. With remote management, uh, the operating expenses can be reduced by remotely accessing, um, assessing problems without the physical need to visit a data center. So as you can see, uh, Samsung has invested heavily to offer a variety of products and solutions to enable and support a solid private network portfolio for enterprises customers. Our end-to-end -end commercial 5G RAN solutions coupled with our compact and scalable uh, core are complemented by our acquisition of Teleworld solutions, where we are committed to offer the highest level of national 5G uh, professional services. And that includes end-to-end -end integrated service capabilities from ARC design all the way through optimization. Um, that's all I had, Derek. Um, thanks for inviting me to speak, and hopefully everybody's going to be uh, reassessing their stock uh, portfolios. Yeah, or at least, you know, uh, you can maybe, maybe you can host the next one, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go over talk, stock tips <laughs> and, you know, our latest trends we're watching on, on Reddit. Um, no, thank you, thank yeah. you, David. That's extremely, uh, extremely helpful um, overview. Hey, what, you know, one of um, one of the questions we had received was um, you mentioned that um, Samsung's got a variety of different uh, deployments out, out there with um, you know a variety of different major companies. Uh, can you give kind of a you know maybe some some overview of a couple of those and and uh, and just highlight some of the you know the use cases that they're that uh, are being enabled? Uh, use cases for the link cell. Or just just in private networking in general, I think you, you yeah I think sure. was what the question was related to. <laughs> sure, sure. So um, you know, I, I alluded to um, a global partnership earlier. Um, we are partnered with, uh, and this is public um, as well, but um, we are partnered with IBM as well. And uh, as part of those industry 4.0 use cases, they include things like acoustic insights and AR, VR, uh, computer vision. Um, so imagine, um, you know, you could take a cell phone and um, set it up to where it is continuously looking at a piece of machinery, right? Um, you know, together with IBM, we're able to essentially monitor that piece of machinery uh, for vibrations or movement and thus reduce uh, cost uh, in the terms of maintenance or issues that may arise. Um, the same goes with, you know, a strange sound that some machinery might be making. Um, what's normal and what's abnormal, right? Um, computer vision where, you know, you are identifying bad production versus good production. Obviously, if you think about it, you have uh, you know, you could have a, a video camera looking down at um, a conveyor belt that's spitting out production uh, at a super high speed, and essentially, what what um, you know, the camera has to send the 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 photos, the the information to a server. The server has to, and the software. Uh, the AI would have to essentially let them know what is good or bad production. And that decision has to make it back to a robot that would basically kick out that one bad part, right, from the production. All of that has to ha happen in milliseconds, you know. And so, you know, that necessitates um, machinery, large machinery, uh, being right next to a production uh, environment. But if you're able to, if you if you bring in millimeter wave, essentially you take away that requirement. You can have you can consolidate your computing uh, into a central location, and and thus you're able to open up more floor space for production. So those are just simple uh, 
use case examples of what we've been looking at. Excellent. Yeah, it sounds like that, the, you know, in addition to this whole notion of Mac and having compute power at the edge, right, that, that the having that the, the millimeter wave and that lightning fast, you know, latency is also a huge benefit, right, to be able to close that gap on stuff that needs to be processed in, you know, like you said, in milliseconds. Excellent. That's right. That's right. So another question we received was, you know, kind of what, um, you know, what were the, what are some of the initial, I guess, environments and scenarios looks like here uh, for indoor 5G that uh, that you all are seeing? What are the kind of the best? I, you know, I guess my interpretation of the question is, what's the, yeah, you know, what are the, what are the best environments or verticals that are, I guess, are leading with indoor 5G? Sure, sure, sure. Um, so. From a vertical standpoint, um, you know, recently, so utilities manufacturing have always been top of the board for 5G uh, because it's been known that, um, you know, enterprise would take advantage of 5G before, uh, you know, regular consumers like we would, right? Um, you know, 4G was the opposite, right? I think. I think 4G was more prevalent for the average consumer and it made its way into enterprise, whereas 5G is more of a specific, uh, it, it creates a massive amount of value for the private enterprise. Um, you know, obviously my, um, you know, my wife would enjoy uh, downloading her, you know, binge TV series, right? But, um, but, in all seriousness, uh, from an enterprise perspective, um, you know, 5G is with the enterprise, right? So <clears throat> from that perspective, uh, utilities and manufacturing have always been top of the board, but recently we've seen, you know, interest, uh, you know, from retail education um, and education in the form of AR, VR for training and um, enhancing education, especially remote education as well. So. Um, we're definitely uh, different areas that we're uh, evaluating right now. Yeah, makes sense. Um, another question we had was on LinkCell specifically and um, around support for for various uh, spectrum. So I know the, you know, obviously the initial um, support is with 28 gigahertz, but the que there's a question around uh, will it support 39 gigahertz and 24 gigahertz? You know, so there's some of the other prevailing um, millimeter wave spectrum that's uh, that's been um, auctioned off and, and supported by uh, global operators. Sure, sure. So, um, you know, normally I, um, I don't like to um, talk about roadmap, <laughs> but uh, I will say that the link cell can, um, you know, Samsung can create variants of the link cell. Currently, it's 28 gigahertz right now with um, our uh, here in the U.S. Uh, that we've um, we're, we're um, um, made, we've made available. Um, 39 gigahertz, uh, you know, would be on the horizon as well. And and there's there's no question that there's also an interest in providing 24 as well. So, um, you know, all of those millimeter wave, um, you know, bands are, are fair game, definitely for the link cell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, safe to say that, yeah, those, those bands are rolling out and um, there, there will be a need to support at some level, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the other question to see here is, uh, you had touched upon a bit about the, you know, there's, um, <laughs> and I think this speaks to a little bit of what, you know, folks read in, um, you know, our trade publications, the wireless industry, or even in, in business trade pubs about, five, you know, the, the, the debate about Wi-Fi, you know, maybe it's probably, probably talking about Wi-Fi 6 here or 6E and, you know, versus mm -hmm. 5G indoor. And is it, is it an either or scenario? What, um, you know, what is the prevailing wisdom here? Uh, you know, from Samsung is, you know, is it likely to be the similar situation to what we've seen in the past where this, this debate has popped up before? Yeah. So uh, there's no question that Wi-Fi um, is, you know, has generally been indoors. Um, and 
uh, cellular networks have generally served outdoors. Um, but what 5G has brought to us is that 5G is generally um, implemented in a small cell fat form factor. And as you know, and with that small form factor, suddenly your, um, your per radio uh, pricing or cost is starting to c come more in line with Wi-Fi. So it begs the question of, well, if it's going to be around the same price, you know, uh, you know, or is, you know, when you compare the two, uh, obviously, you know, with 5G being the more reliable um, technology, you know, it, it definitely um, will make a lot of enterprises think twice about, you know, whether or not they should continue with Wi-Fi or not. But like I alluded to earlier, um, Wi-Fi will probably still be around for a long time. And that being said, 5G can complement Wi-Fi as well. And so there's no, you know, I've, I've actually seen um, recently we, we uh, spoke with a customer who uh, was interested in, um, you know, imp implementing 5G in their factory floor, but they wanted to have, um, you know, LTE and public 5G. So private 5G in the factory floor and public 5G uh, together with LTE and Wi-Fi in their office space. And so I, I think that depending on the use and depending on what you're trying to use it for will really drive which technology you're going to use. Um, mm -hmm. there, you know, so uh, I think that's probably the best way to answer that, uh, Derek. Um, but, um, you know, definitely both will still reside and be around and support enterprise. Um, but um, in the specific case where you do need ultra reliability, ultra low latency, um, and with the prices coming more in line with an enterprise Wi-Fi system, um, you know, definitely is, is something to consider down the road, especially when you're yeah. trying to future-proof yourself. Sure. No, I mean, that makes total sense. I think, you know, you had alluded to earlier in your in your um, presentation that, you know, there's there's this notion, too, of, okay, what do you, you know, what applications and use cases are the enterprise ultimately supporting, right? And we saw this, you know, we've seen this with previous generations uh, of wireless technology where it's like, look, there, we, it's, it, you know, we've used this, this corny analogy in the past in this industry is like, it's a field of dreams. You build a network, people are going to use it. They use it, and then, you know, usually yeah. we end up getting to the capacity situation, right? And it's like, okay, well, we have to introduce another network technology, right? So, um, right. with you know, with five G, to your point, you bring in all these other different performance characteristics, and you can run all sorts of different use cases and applications that, uh, you know, whether it's security, reliability, mobility, that are going to be, um, you know, better suited for for five G than potentially Wi Fi, and Wi Fi still will have its its uses, right? So that makes Definitely. sense. Yes. Cool. All right. Well, I think we're coming up to the hour here, and I don't see any more questions coming in. So, you know, that being said, I think it's a wrap. But I did want to thank you for for joining us today and for your insights and perspective. I uh, really appreciate it. No, thank you for having me. And thanks, everybody, for, for joining us today again. Um, We'll be back, uh, you know, uh, next month with another version of uh, Network Tech Talk. And, uh, again, we'll be able to find us um, on the website for replay um, for those who weren't able to join us live. Uh, and um, follow us on our, on our uh, social media outlets. Thank you very much. Have a good day.